right, so <clears throat> this video is going to be the top 10 ways people make money on the street, like homeless people or whatever. Whoever's on the street, th this is the top 10 ways that they make money. And if you ever find yourself in this position where you're out on the street, you ain't got no money, you got you got no nowhere to go, no home, um, there's things you can do that will get you back up on your feet. Um, you know, none of these are really a, a, like career advice. I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't suggest living like this. But um, you know, when you're out on the street, you have to make money. You, I mean, it's that's just the reality of the situation. Street survival is not like surviving in the woods. On the street, you ain't hunting food. You're, you're make, you got to make money, dude. And um, it's not easy, you know. But um, and you'd be surprised at, at who's who's successful at it and who isn't like you'd think like the thug types that are like tough as fuck like gangsters and shit you'd think they'd be able to just go out on the street and make money like no a lot of the time all they really know is like violence and it's like if if all you can do is beat people up and rob people and shit that'll get you by for maybe a couple of days but you ain't gonna be able to live like that because eventually you're gonna make a whole lot of enemies and you know you're gonna get a bad reputation and people first of all they're not gonna to want to be around you they're not gonna to want to be associated with you at all like most people aren't and then the other thing is there's gonna be other people who are gonna be out to get you and I don't care how tough you are like sooner or later you gotta sleep and when you're asleep anybody can can take you out that's why you, you gotta be careful making enemies on the street because most of these people if, if they want to find out where you're sleeping, they are going to find out. It's, there's no, I mean, unless you got a deep hidden spot, which I've been in those too, but the, there's like, you you don't want to go trekking two miles into Central Park every day to, 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 go, to go to your spot to go to sleep. So eventually those spots get old, especially when you're carrying a lot of weight, but I'm getting off the topic. So imagine this scenario, you're, you're broke, you're homeless, you've been evicted, it's like, what do you do? So, the first, the first and easiest way to make money is basically it's just flying a sign. So, um, there's pretty much two ways to do it. You can either try to kind of be funny, or you can kind of like look for charity. You know, it's like um, the the funny ones is like you'll see people with signs that say like, "I need money for weed." That's a popular one that does pretty well. But the problem is. In, in the hot areas in New York City, like Times Square and stuff, there's gonna be there's gonna be other people doing it, and they're they're not gonna take too kindly to some new person popping up in Times Square with it. So, you might get into some confrontations over that. I've seen it a million times. I mean, I've I've seen people fighting fighting over it. It's like these people they take it serious, man. Um, you know, so you can go the humor route, the but and that that. The, either way seems to work about the same. I've never done, I've never really flown a sign. Um, I just, I I had quit my job. I was out on the street in a, in a way by choice. I just didn't feel, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Um, I felt like, you know, I quit my job. These people are working for their money. I, I have really no right to be begging them for their money, you know? And like they're working for their money. I, I could have been working for my money, but I'm choosing not to. So now I'm going to work out on the street, which was part of my whole plan anyway. So if my circumstances were different, had I been fired and evicted and all that stuff, I, you know, who knows? I, I don't know. I might have panhandled at some point. And when I was addicted to heroin, I was seriously considering it at times because I knew I would have been making a lot more money. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. It just you know it I couldn't do it I couldn't bring myself to do it I worked too hard my whole life I couldn't just swallow my pride like that and and do that I couldn't do it um you know I'd I'd, I'd rather not eat and that's I don't suggest that either because it turned me into a very angry person for a while there I was I was filled with rage for a couple of years there um but so then there's the other route with flying a sign it's basically you're just going for charity like homeless hungry anything helps you know something like that i knew one dude he would just sit out there with a sign that said food like he he was doing his own thing but he 
people rarely gave him money. They would just bring him food. But that that was all he wanted anyway. He didn't even care about money. He just wanted food. Um, so another one is you could panhandle on the train. Like in a city like New York, you got the subways. So there's people who literally do this every day. They go on the trains and they just they do a little speech like I just got evicted I lost my job you know whatever the situation is if anyone can spare any change I would really appreciate it you know what I mean and you know they would come on the train and some of them from what I've heard make a lot of money but I mean it's who, who wants to do that every day who wants to live like that I mean I never did it um I did try to do stand-up comedy on the train once, but that that's a whole other video. But I more than once I was I was trying to get serious with it, but um so you know, there's panhandling on the train and most people on the train they don't want to hear it, dude. They're they're either on their way to a job they hate or on their way home from a job they hate. They don't want to they they don't they don't have much pity f for someone begging on the train, but if you do it all day, you you're probably going to make at least 50 to 100 bucks is my guess maybe a couple hundred i don't know you know i knew people who claim they made a couple hundred but these are people who are like they've got like they they're they're like career con artists in a way like there was one kid he had a backpack with a dog in it and he said basically he just wants money to feed his dog and i knew it was bullshit but I mean, his his act was so convincing, I almost gave him a fucking dollar. I'm like, oh, his dog needs food. Then I'm looking at him, I'm like, this kid's on fucking dope, dude. I'm not fucked all that shit. Like, how expensive is it to feed a fucking dog, you know? But so he was basically, uh, he was killing it. <laughs> he was fucking killing it. He was asking, like, just hitting people up for, for money to feed his dog. And people, they don't give a shit about people, but they do give a shit about dogs. They'll give you money to feed your dog, but... <laughs> they'll let you starve to death and die but so um I'm trying to think of another one that was oh uh, you know what else people do on the trains is they sell DVDs now I'm not sure if that is even a thing anymore because nowadays everything's like pe people don't even have DVD players although I guarantee in the ghetto and like certain parts of the city they're still rocking DVDs I I I, I can almost guarantee it um but like yeah, so what they do is they'll pirate the movies off the internet, cut, burn it onto a DVD, and sell them for a couple bucks a piece on the train. They make a lot. They used to make a lot of money. Nowadays, I don't know. Because, you know, people are on their way home from work. They want to watch a movie and chill. Like, And they're getting, like, brand new movies. Like, whatever's out right now, they've got it on DVD, you know? So, that's another thing they do on the train. Um... Another thing they do on the train is you'll be sitting there on the train and you'll hear all of a sudden it's showtime and everyone's heart just drops because most people they don't want to fucking deal with this shit. So these kids will get on, they'll start blasting this music and dancing all over the fucking train. I'm talking about they're ricocheting off the walls and shit. They're knocking into people like most people on the train hate it. But some of these kids are doing some impressive stuff. They're walking on their hands on a moving train. They're doing back flips, front flips. Like, sometimes they're just so good at it, you gotta throw them a buck just for like, you just gotta respect the athletic abilities. You know what I mean? Like some of these kids are doing some cool stuff, but in the beginning, every time I'm always like, nah, I don't, they, I don't wanna hear this shit, man. Get them off the train. But sometimes they even get me, cause I'm like, that that was impressive dude you know like i seen a kid walking up and down the train on his hands these trains are stopping they're going f like they're hitting 60 miles an hour this kid's walking on his hands i was i was impressed um so another one is selling water um you know all you got to do is buy a case of water cooler put some ice in it and go sell water but the thing is people in uh, like I can't speak for any other ci city I, I'm I was in New York City so in New York City people are are territorial so you can't just go set up anywhere and start selling water selling water or doing anything it's like if you go to a spot and there's there's already like street performers working there or there's people selling water there or there's someone panhandling there it's best to go find your own spot you don't want to go 
getting stepping on anyone's toes and some people take it very seriously i used to take it very seriously like you just you don't want to just show up in someone's spot brand new and start doing some shit because odds are whoever is in that spot they know that spot they know all the people around there and you're not you're not gonna win you know what i mean like unless you're whatever if you want to go around making enemies like that that's your business but when I first started doing type these types of things on the street in New York, I was very careful about my spots. I didn't go stepping on anyone's toes, you know what I mean? I went and got my own spots, you know? So, but yeah, selling water is, you know, you don't want to make a career out of it. It's not going to work in the winter. Ain't nobody buying no water in the winter. Um, the other thing is the park rangers and the cops in New York City, they, they, they don't like it. They, they don't want to see people doing it but sometimes they'll ignore it, it all depends some people some of the cops are gonna they're gonna mess with you and some of them aren't some the park range park rangers on the other hand they're gonna mess with you like 99.9% .9 of the time they don't want it in the park and none of the street performers really want you around them either like the street artists and the musicians like they all kind of look down on the people selling water no, nobody wants that shit around them um, because it's like <laughs> it's usually a big chaotic scene I've seen we used to call it water wars in Central Park where I was at because all the people would come out every summer and they'd be fighting and battling each other and stepping on each other's like setting up right in front of each other like all the regulars in there the street artists and performers we did not want the water people around although some of them we kind of got along with you know but for the most part nobody fucking wanted them around and it's like and it, if you saw this scene you would understand why like nine times out of ten they're hammered on vodka they're they're screeching at the people people if they're not buying water they're screeching at each other they're dumping each other's coolers they're literally fist fighting over this shit like so yeah the the water scene if you're gonna sell water go find your own spot i suggest going into like central park and just find somewhere quiet and sit there and mind your business get your water off and get the fuck out of there dude before someone else pops up and you know um but yeah you don't want to make a career out of something like that the reality is you know something like selling water you're really not obtaining any type of skill you might be growing some nuts you know like growing some balls doing some new stuff on the street which i suggest it's like yeah give it a shot you know what i mean go do something new but <laughs> it's I you don't want to do it for the rest of your life you know what I mean and you don't want to get too caught up in it because then you will end up doing it over and over because it's pretty easy money pretty fast but it's like it's all it's gonna do is get, you're not moving anywhere in life if you're selling water you know what I mean it's you're just you're just getting to the next day you might make a couple hundred bucks but when winter comes around, you're gonna you ain't gonna be able to sell water, and if your only skill is selling water, you're gonna be panhandling. You know, you're gonna be either asking people for money or flying a sign. Um. So then, another one. Well, hold on. so that's you know that's why I never sold water because I felt like <clears throat> it's just gonna get me to tomorrow. I I don't want to be on this treadmill for the rest of my life where I'm just waking up every day getting the water and selling it when I was in Las Vegas I was thinking about do doing it because the guys out on Las Vegas Boulevard they were killing it while they were selling water and I was I was very tempted but but I'm glad I never did because I that easy money would I would have just fell into that pattern of, of doing what was easy and God knows I'd still be out on Las Vegas Boulevard selling water you know what I mean so like it's something that I suggest if you're going to do it, just do it to get out of that situation, just to get yourself up off the street, you know, whatever. Um, one kid, he, he, he sold so much water, he went and bought himself a truck. He was some college kid from New Jersey, and he just came out there and worked his ass off one summer and got himself a truck, you know. So, um, another thing is obviously like street musicians, and if you, if you're a any type of musician I suggest you do some street performing just for the experience of it it's like you know it's it's gonna it's gonna grow some heart you know what I mean it's gonna give you some steel in your spine just going out there and making some money on the street with your talent with your ability you know 
So I suggest anyone who plays music sh should at least try street performing because it it's not easy to do, you know, like it's it takes it takes some balls to do it. So if you're a musician, I don't care if you got 10 million dollars, you should you should give it a shot, I would say, because it's going to be good for you, you know, just do it for one day, give it a shot, like why not? You know how hard it was for me to start street performing? There was I would wander around the street with like just in like a daze just afraid to even start you know what i mean so you know street musicians and it's a respectable thing everybody got respect for it it's like and you know people play the buckets they play the drums um there's that's one thing people don't take too kindly to though like if you're gonna be doing the drums or the buckets you better separate yourself from the other street musicians like and just all together you just you don't want to be around any other street artists or people, whatever they're doing, they don't want you sitting next to them banging on a bucket, you know what I mean? So, go out to Times Square, find yourself a spot, and, you know, you don't want to be doing it on top of other people. And that's street musicians in general. They don't want to be on top of each other. Where I used to work in Strawberry Fields, the, the, the musicians had to set up a list, because other than that, they were just coming out there and whoever whoever got out there first started and it's like at first there was no system to it so it's like other musicians would show up and set up right across from them and start playing or set up right at the front and start playing and it's like you're, you're fucking with somebody's livelihood people take it serious to this day there's this one dude james who there's video there's videos on him of him on youtube going off on like screeching at the Taurus for not paying me he's a good he's a he's a talented musician but the guy's such a nut job that like he would he'd start screaming at the people if they weren't tipping him well and like he was a character man but so he was a big issue out there he even got to a point like he, he was on the list but then a couple years went by and he was angry at all the new musicians getting on the list so he would just show up and start playing on top of their set because he just had no respect for him and like it was a big issue and like he he ended up getting pretty much banned from the whole area because everyone hated him so you know you don't want to be acting like that like whatever you're doing on the street you don't want to be acting like that james was staying in an apartment that's why he he could kind of get away with it if he was staying on the street he, he would have had some issues you know like because he would have been such an easy target. People would have found found out where he was sleeping, and he, he probably would have been dealing with some with, with some stuff. He would have ended up getting ran out, which is what ended up happening any, anyway. Like he, he he pretty much I don't know how it is nowadays, but it got to a point where he was never around because they weren't even putting him on the list anymore. And it's like you know I don't care how tough you are when you got ten other people against you and you're you're not gonna win you know um you can you can only fight that battle for so long but so yeah street you know street performing music man people people make a lot of money doing it and and it's the better you are at it the more you're gonna make and some people sell their cds there's a guy in washington square park he used to play the piano he would kill it he'd make so much money dude um i've seen bands out in washington square park where they're selling cds all day while they're playing their music and absolutely killing i'm talking that hundreds maybe thousands of dollars a day they're just they're killing it because it's like if you're good at what you do people are going to recognize it and you're going to make money so um you know then there's the acrobats on the street um they i i, I watched to get a guy in union square one time he came out he gathered up a crowd. He told everyone he was going to do something it, like almost impossible. And he, he got everyone intrigued. I mean, I sat there and wa watched to see what he was going to do. I didn't get up front because I was broke at the time. I couldn't give him any money. So um, I just watched from a distance. And I was like, what? It, like, I was thinking he was just going to do something stu stupid. You know what I mean? Get everyone gathered around, do some dumb thing, and then just sucker them out of a buck each. But what he ended up doing was he lined up like five people in a row and came it might have even been more than five people 
but he came running up from like a hundred feet back. This guy was, he, he was running, he was running at like 30 miles an hour. He runs up and does a fucking like roll over the people it wasn't like a flip he jumped up and like went sideways and like rolled through the air over all these people and i was like holy shit i mean this guy looked like a crackhead and when he did this shit he looked like superman bro and i mean he must have off that crowd alone he must have made a couple hundred bucks but um and then there's other acrobats on the street that are not so impressive but they just know how to talk to the crowd they just they'll do some regular old shit a little bit of tumbling but they just they they know how to play the tourist so like they'll make a lot of money and you know other regulars in the par parks the musicians and the artists they don't want the acrobats around because they they create such a, a scene and they take like they take all the attention and they're pretty greedy they will they will they'll just keep doing it over and over and over um there's Tick and Tack in Washington Square Park. They're just, they've been there since like the 80s. Every, everybody respects them. Everybody respects their spot just because they've been there longer than anybody, you know? And they, they used to kill it, man. They used to make so much money. Um, but whenever they would come and set up, I would move. If I, if I was near the center of the park and then they'd show up and start doing their thing, I didn't even want to be near it because... I couldn't compete with them. They're they're taking all the attention, and it's like it's not good for my business. I was out there. I, I'll I'll get to what I was doing, but I would move spots just to keep keep making money because I don't I don't need this this big distract distraction going on ten feet away from me, you know. And they were there way before me, so I was like, whatever. I'm you know respect the spot, bro. Like uh, you know they've been there since like the '80s, dude. So. Um, what else? What does that say? Oh, and then there's contortionists. Like, people will just, they'll put a little bucket out, it says tips on it, and they'll start just doing, like, contortion type stuff. They're basically, I mean, some of it's impressive. They're tying themselves in a knot, basically. So it's like people just walk by and drop a, a buck in the thing, and they they do pretty good. It, it's pretty cool to see if you've never seen it, you know? Um... But yeah, I've seen some impressive stuff. People walking on their hands with their with their feet on their shoulders, like crazy shit, you know. Um, so, oh, and here's another one that used to drive me nuts when I'd be working in Times Square at night. You got the pe people with the costumes, and like, oh my God, most of them are such degenerates, like under those costumes that like. So you know, people come to Times Square and they want a picture. So then. You got people out there in costumes who will take a picture with you for five bucks or whatever. But the problem is a lot of them, yeah, they're, they're, they're just, they're fucked up people, man. They'll, they'll, they'll be starting fights with people over not getting tipped. And some of these tourists, they don't get it. They don't, like, they're coming from other countries. Like, they think you're just being nice, you know? Like, this is, this is a, like, they would, they w wouldn't tip, but not because, it, not because they're cheap or something, be, because they don't know what the fuck is going on, you know? And some of these costume guys are pretty aggressive. They're just gonna, they're gonna get you to take the picture, you know? Like, and some of these people from the other countries, they just, they don't know what the hell's going on. I used to feel bad. I'm like, these people didn't come to New York to get bullied out of their money. Like, come on, bro. Like, don't be like that, bro. You know what I mean? So if you're gonna do the costume thing, you'll make money, depending on how good the costume is there was this guy in a predator costume that was so cool and impressive that he used to kill it another guy steve i used to know he made this transformer costume out of like styrofoam which was pretty badass and he, but he should have been making more to be honest for what he did and how cool he made that costume he should have been making more um and um what that there, there was another one i was gonna mention i can't even remember it um Oh, this guy used to fucking crack me up. So th there was this one homeless guy who somehow got his hands on, like, this cloth Iron Man co costume. It's like something you'd get at, like, Toys R Us or some shit. I mean, it was, like, just this cloth Iron Man costume that he would throw on. And 
he was living on the street so it was all dirty and shit <laughs> like i used to crack up when i'd see this guy he'd have this filthy cloth iron man costume on there's like holes in it and shit <laughs> and like it just used to crack me up. i'm like this kid's got some balls like the audacity of this kid to be out here doing this shit <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know. I wonder what happened to him. I don't know. There was other guys. They'd paint themselves with gold spray paint. They're probably dead now. <laughs> like, they're spraying themselves with this poison, and, and the, like they stand there like a statue and then scare people. You know, a lot of them are just like homeless crackheads that are just spray painting themselves with gold paint right in their own face. I mean, it, like you, <laughs> it's funny. people are nuts, dude. So I haven't like. You know, I, I stopped working at Times Square at night because I hated the scene with all, all these fucked up lunatics out there, like, ruining the whole shit. Like, but, I, I don't know. I, I wonder if they still do that. Like, it can't be, it can't be safe to be spray painting yourself with, like, metallic paint, you know? And, uh, I don't know. Then there was the Statue of Liberty guys, but yeah. The thing with the costumes is the more work you put into it, the more you're going to make. And obviously, you want to be nice to the tourists. Like, you just, you, you kind of got to be a people person. You don't, and I don't even know how it is now. I know the cops started cracking down on them because they were all fighting each other. They were getting in fights with the tourists. And they were just making a, a ridiculous scene that, like, you got, you got to take into consideration that these people, these people are, are on vacation with their families and shit you're starting to fight with him over five bucks like come on bro like you can't be acting like that man you know what i mean so that's why i stopped even working in times square i got tired I, I just got tired of seeing this type of shit like i didn't want him fucking around me i didn't want to be associated with i with it like all the i need money for weed sign guys getting in fights and shit i was like forget all this shit bro i'm i'm gonna find another spot you know so Another thing is making jewelry. You can go get beads and fishing line and make jewelry. Like, pretty easy thing to get off. The more artistic you are, the more you're gonna make, you know? And I feel bad. There was this guy that used to sit with his jewelry right by me. And then one day I was just like annoyed, telling him like, man, you're a grown man doing some shit a 16 year old girl should be doing. Like, man, get the fuck out of you. Like, you know, just being a dick that I felt like, I felt like he was screwing up my cash flow which really he wasn't what what was screwing up my cash flow was my own attitude you know so these are things i regret like you know so if you're doing this type of shit on the street learn from my mistakes don't don't be, don't be getting angry at people don't don't be rude to people be nice bro like you'll feel better in the long run you know what i mean i've like back then i felt like oh i don't want to be a pussy you know and let everyone just set up right on top of me nowadays i think back on it and i'm like I uh, I was I was being a dick a lot of the time. I don't own the park, you know what I mean? If I got such a problem with him, I could have moved. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a what I'm a getting a fight and punch some guy like nah, come on, bro. Like I just reg I, I regret acting like that, you know, and being 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 so angry and rude, but um <clears throat> So yeah, my advice is if you're going to be doing this type of stuff on the street, just just be cool, man. And not because you're afraid to get in a fight, but because it's better to just be cool be cool with people you know what i mean like that was what i was thinking is like i i don't want people to think i'm afraid and this and that it's like that's that's your problem bro that's that it, you can't be like you know we're not we're not fucking we're not high school kids man like no nobody's scared to fight you know like i mean i guess some people are whatever dude just be cool you know so all right what was that making jewelry so then this this is what I was doing is um, well I was doing a couple of things but this is one of the things I was doing was portraits I can draw pretty good um, there's other people that just make cool drawings and sell them um, there was this one artist he just did black and white paintings which were very simple and easy to do and he did pretty good um, but I was selling portraits but what I was doing that was different is my sign said bad portraits so I would have people lined up on the benches and I was I was doing better than most portrait artists because I was doing something different. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you want to make money, you got to be kind of original, you know? Like there's tons of portrait artists out there and most of them draw better than me, but my sign said bad portraits and I used to do this silly little 
simple cartoonish type drawing of the people and they loved it they absolutely loved it loved it like most people most people paid me more more than i was even asking for so like <clears throat> you know that was one of the best ideas i ever had and i had a good spot because by by the time i was doing portraits i had been living on the street for years i knew the whole scene like people respected me i could i could do what i wanted and the spot i was in i was in there before anyone you know what i mean so i was working in strawberry fields in central park the only the only guy who was in there when i started was gary the mayor and me and him were doing very different things so we we pretty much just left each other alone i mean we had our issues everybody had issues with gary but in in the end we we just left each other alone i was on one end he was on the other i was doing my thing he was doing his um but gary used to he, he used to get on my nerves a lot but anyway so um so yeah if you're gonna do portraits i suggest you do something a little different i'm not suggesting you do exactly what i do you, you just be yourself you know what i mean you don't want to do you don't want to do like other people's ideas come up with your own you know um I heard of one guy that does zombie portraits. That's that is badass, dude. What a brilliant idea. You know what I mean? Now, I would love to do that, but that's his shit. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying I invented bad portraits, but I'm saying like you're better off doing your own thing for your own good. You know? But I don't do portraits no more. You do what you want. I've considered doing portraits again down here in Florida. I know I'd kill it, but it's like I already did it for years. I'm moving on to some to some new shit. So. Um, another thing that I used to do is I would tell jokes that I wrote for a dollar a piece, um, which is a very hard, very hard thing to do. Um, but I was doing it not to get rich, obviously. It, I was doing it more to conquer my, my own anxieties and fears, and I was doing stand-up comedy on and off at the, at the time, and I felt it was just good for my character to go out there, like my, my inner character, not... The, like I was playing a character or something but it was good for my m me as a person to go out th there and conquer that fear of doing that which w which was very hard for me it was like I was so scared to do it but eventually I got pretty good at it you know but um another thing so I'd I, I'd be out in Times Square at night doing my dollar jokes and my little sign there was another guy who was a straight up crackhead half his teeth were missing but he used to dress pretty well pretty well because he made a lot of money so he'd have like this leather hat leather jacket and um he would just go up to the tourists in times square and be like yo if i can make you laugh you throw me a buck or something and they'd be like yeah sure you know and he'd tell them all the same joke he was a black dude and he'd tell him i forget what the joke was it was something about something uh, it was some hack shit that played on their like white guilt you know what i mean and this guy used to i shit you not he used to make a couple hundred dollars every night but that's why he was a crackhead because he like he knew he could go out in times square whenever he felt like it day or night and make a few hundred dollars then he would go blow it all on crack and be right back and like he used to show me wads and wads of money and i was jealous as fuck to be honest but i i was also thinking like you know that's I'm not here to do that, you know what I mean? I'm 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 here to do something different. I'm here to like I'm I'm building character, you know what I mean? This dude's just out to make money. But like there there was times where I was tempted to start doing what he was doing because I could respect I could respect his nerve, you know what I mean? He he was just going up to anyone and and doing this thing and sh straight hustling him out, out of money, you know what I mean? And playing them like a fiddle, you, you know, with the whole white guilt thing. A lot of these tourists, like, you know, the, the, they they don't know how New York is. So, I yeah, I'm not kidding you. The dude was making, dude was making hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a daily basis. Um, and so yeah, I mean, I guess that's I guess that's about it. I didn't mean to make this video so long. I don't know if I should post this whole thing or if I should edit it down. I think there's a lot of good information in here, so I think I'm gonna just leave the whole shit up, man. I mean, if people are in a rush, then, then go 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 watch someone else's videos. You know what I mean? And I, I'm kind of rushing through this anyway. You got me stuttering and shit. Um, but you you know, the more YouTube videos I make, I'll get more comfortable. I can, I just stutter a little when I'm nervous, and I'm nervous when I make the videos and shit. So, um, 
I don't know. I guess it's, I guess that's about it for this. I might refilm it. I might not. But uh, if if you like my stuff, subscribe. Give me a like. Uh, I guess that's it. All right. Later.